I guess you're in Santiago. Great to great to see you. It's it's uh, been a while. Uh, now we're here digitally. We're gonna taste four vintages of Senya, uh, a couple of hundred pointers, a couple of wines that I love, particularly the new vintage of uh, the 2018. And you know, right off the bat, I gotta ask you. You know. I tasted it in February in Chile. It was amazing. I was bowled over. You know, what makes the 2018 Senya so very special? Pleasure to see you. Uh, just fond memories of the time we were together in Chile in February. And as you say, so uh, let me pour some wine here. Um, I like that you're, that you're willing to taste at, it's 7 a.m. in Santiago. So you, so Chilean, you to have a nice Chilean start, start, start with, with tasting early. Cheers, <laughs> cheers mate. <laughs> cheers. I'm holding a glass of, of Senya 18. And, uh, and I mean, you know, it's been a tough year for everyone around the world, there's no doubt, with all the crisis. But the good thing is that perhaps we have here the finest vintage uh, to date uh, for, for Senya. Uh, vintage 18 was a really a perfect season. The winter came with good rainfall, allowing for a nice uh, water table. Spring came uh, warm and dry, uh, gave a nice uh, development to the vineyard, nice flowering, nice set. And then we had a hot summer, but then it refreshed at the end of autumn. So it was a very long uh, season, allowing for perfect ripeness, but very gently. So the, the gentleness of this, of this uh, time, of this harvest, allowed the the tannins to be really super fine, super grainy. Um, the acidity was kept beautifully. So you have a blend of a wine that has the elegance, the intensity, the purity, and at the same time, a beautiful concentration, and at the same time, the power, the richness. There's, the aromas are fantastic with the ripeness, but then it goes fresh. But the length, it's so long, I can still taste it. That's why I think it's a perfect wine. It really has fantastic balance. And this is a blend of uh, Cabernet Sauvignon, Malbec, Carbonier, Cabernet Franc, and Merlot. What do you think of the, I think there's something that the Carbonier and the Malbec gives to the blend. That's what makes it unique, that character of this little touch of jamminess but then it's not jammy, it's still fresh. You know that just in the center palette, that really intense ripeness and character that you don't get in other places. If you will, I would say it reminds me of great Bordeaux and great Napa. And it just like, it's this really unique sort of combination that's so exciting. And it's so drinkable too, because of the balance. We wanted to have a character that made it unique. And in fact, today, you don't find any other wine anywhere in the world that has this combination of grapes. So it's a classic Bordeaux on one side with a 55% Cabernet Sauvignon, uh, with Cabernet Franc, with Petit Verdot. But then Carmenere, well, Malbec adds, uh, the, the uh, Malbec and Carmenere give the, the uniqueness. And Carmenere gives the spices uh, a bit the uh, bit the truffles, is it the complexity, um, and and the Malbec is more juicy, more violets, more more chocolate, more, more uh, fruity, fruity. So these two components uh, add complexity and and freshness. I was thinking, okay, yeah, like where they used to use the Malbec and a lot of Carmenere in their blends in the 1800s. Yeah, uh, Carmenere was used by Lafitte by the by the first growth in Bordeaux, and Malbec was used in the right bank as well. So uh, this is coming back to old Bordeaux. I mean, as you know, the the vineyard in Chile was founded before Phylloxera struck Europe. The cuttings had come by boat, and that's that's the, the beautiful vineyard uh, that we have. I think we need to right away try the fifteen against it because the fifteen was a hundred points by me. Uh, that was one of the first great uh, Chilean wines I ever tasted. I haven't had it for a while, so it's great to try it against the uh, 18. And that has the same core of ripe, 
lightly jammy fruit, just you know, just showing ripeness, but then firm tannins and solid structure. 15 was also a very balanced vintage, a uh, very balanced season. Uh, I think perhaps it was slightly warmer at the end, it had a bit more spike, so it allowed us to have more carbonated. How impor- important is it that your grape are grown biodynamically and it's all coming from the same estate amazing vineyards on this hillside you can see the andes mountains are so close by is biodynamics really important for making that incredible quality absolutely Uh, we always wanted to have a wine that is really a pure expression of the terroir of in aconcagua valley in okoa and uh, uh, having biodynamic farming it really allow us to express that uniqueness. Uh, we only have, uh, we only use the elements from the property. So we have the compost and the different uh, preparations that are applied to the to the vineyard throughout the season. And I think it allows us to have very deep rooting, to have a very healthy canopy uh, and the whole property in balance. And at the end of the day, it, I think the vineyard, having a very resistant vineyard, very healthy vineyard, allow us the pro- the, the the different vintages to to excel. Let's try the uh, 17 then. The 17 was the most, uh, was the hottest vintage of this fall, uh, of this, uh, perhaps of the last decade. Uh, You had fires in the south of Chile, luckily not in Aconcagua, nor in Maipo Valley, but it was a a, a season of extremes. We had a very hot temperatures, so uh, the, the, the challenge here was keeping the balance, keeping the acidity. Uh, and to do that, we harvested rather early, the, at the end of the first week in March, so that we, we, have a, we have a powerful wine, perhaps the most powerful and rich of all these four vintages. It's interesting. With the 18 and 15, the ripeness is more focused. And then the 17, the ripeness fans out more. And it's really interesting what you say the wine really tells the story more. In 17, it really shows it was a riper year. And I think it's a fantastic wine as well. Let's try the uh, the 16 now. As we were saying before, 16 was the coolest vintage. It was a, oh. a cool, was rainy, and we had less a bit less sunshine. Uh, it was a cooler season from December onwards. So being a very cool vintage. This is the wine that has the least percentage of Carbonari. We only added a uh, 8% Carbonari into the blend. Uh-huh. So it is more red fruit, uh, more, we have a, a much larger percentage of Malbec, 20% of Malbec. So here is more, it's more of a red, it's more on the red fruit character. Yeah. Where does Senya go from 18? Senya is already turning uh, 25 years next year, and the vineyard itself is 22 years old. So it's really coming to 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 together in a very nice way. And as my great mentor and friend Bob, Bob Bondavi said, this is the beginning. This is the beginning. I think Senya is really beginning to have all this harmony, the uh, by dynamic farming, the aging of the vineyards. And I, I think 18 truly reflects where we wanted to go. And I think we don't want... It really uh, is to pursue this quality and to continue developing Senya around the world. Thank you for making exceptional wines, and particularly this 18. And um, felicidades. And nos vemos uh, la próxima. We'll see you soon. Muchas gracias. Un big abrazo. Okay. Gracias. (laughs) Okay.